Um, enterprise design thinking actually came up when IBM and its clients actually needed uh, design thinking that you can do at a scale. Mm. Uh, it's specifically made for uh, big enterprises and to break silos. So when you have a lot of people who can't attend your uh, normal agile sprints, um, it can't, they can't be hands-on involved in every activity you do. How do you keep them involved, um, but also informed about everything that is happening? And sort of one of the big things of enterprise design thinking is where it differs from design thinking as a whole is that it kind of looks at the whole design process. So it includes design research. It includes prototyping at a fidelity level that will make sense in an HR squad. And it's really sort of the mindset and methodology and framework that allows us to work in an agile environment and actually achieve business outcomes at the end of the day. Uh, one of the things I really like about enterprise design thinking that it doesn't have to work with agile, but it works very well within the agile environment where we always start with um, design thinking, we start with real customer problems, and then we can turn them to epics or user stories. We can break it down to what will actually be delivered and come to life. The key challenge becomes when either technology starts driving the outcome or when we focus too heavily on a bottom line and we forget about the user and their emotional need. I think that's one of the key challenges. And I think where we don't have a diverse, empowered team that actually is involved in the loop, and takes part in the process, we can get one-sided answers that don't lead to an actual feasible outcome that we can deliver. There's a lot of technology, but if you don't, you're not actually solving a problem, what's the point of the technology? And for me, as a new IBMer, uh, it was very interesting to see all tech people talking about customers, um, and which encouraged me to actually uh, join IBM. Mindset is shared across a large portion of the organization, so we think of it more as that we're fortunate position that we have a lot of the technology that we that can solve the challenges and uh, like address the, best, the um, emotional needs of our users in a way that's actually meaningful. So a lot of the things we come up with aren't just dreams, they can become reality because we have the technology to make it happen. One of the good examples is how much uh, IBM is doing work with artificial intelligence with their Watson. Uh, but we don't go to clients and say, you need a chatbot. We never encourage that. What we try to do is understand their problems and see if the way to solve it can be a chatbot. And validate it with customers, how they're actually feeling when they're using a chatbot to solve their problem. Of course, we use data sources such as talking to actual people and you know reading that facial expression and really feeling how a person and empathizing with them in like a physical space. But the exciting thing is thanks to, you know, the bots and stuff we've got doing, we can actually also use sentiment analysis in our data and understand the context and the tone of uh, voice in text and start actually using that additional piece of data to make even more informed decisions and bring the emotions even back into the data. And that ch changed the whole culture in the team who's working on the project. It's not a designer saying we need to do this and the technical people looking at us and questioning. They are actually participating in customer sessions. They are hearing the customers as well or we're playing it back to them. So when they actually are solving the problem, they're getting that satisfaction as well. It's not just the designer who's feeling the pain when it's not solved. And when we think about the emotion, we don't just think about the emotions of the user, but even the, the squad, the team that's delivering upon it. So I think one of the great things is because of enterprise design thinking and applying it as a whole team, you know, from technical lead to our product owners to the designers to our automation tester, that um, we actually bridge that experience and that learning across the whole squad. And the other thing is to sponsor users. So instead of just having a an empathy map where or persona on the wall, we actually physically bring a user into the squad, we co-design with them. And then later on, let's say this user is called Lisa, we will have Lisa's face in the wall and go, does Lisa actually want this? Does Lisa want this? And you know, we really drive that home all the time. So it doesn't become just a fictional persona. It, it's a real person. One of the other things is that in a world that's you know getting more connected and disconnected at the same time, in even our squads, you know, we're busier, we always did more distractions, and it is no longer good enough for a, a designer in a team to just be focused on design, the user interface, the emotionals. Their whole responsibility needs to become more T-shaped as a skill platform across the practitioners in a whole squad. So it's no longer just good enough to look at desirability for a designer. 
we need to look at viability and feasibility at the same time and share that responsibility and mindset across the entire squad. Yes, which can mean that the designer needs to compromise some of the things that they wanted to do to delight the customer and start thinking like a product owner sometimes where the designer needs to decide if it's more valuable to go to market sooner than actually doing this perfect product and then launching. And all this when you're all working together and thinking about the same problem and the same customer, you start all thinking the same and um, you don't have the conversations where everyone's trying to convince each other. Like we have a technical lead who, whose main concern is security, but also he would hate when a customer has to do a lot of steps to verify himself. And that's a very good thing when they start naturally start talking like a designer and telling us actually let's remove the captcha let's remove two-factor authentication actually it makes more sense that they just log in easily so that's the beauty when everyone in the team has the same mindset hmm. and it's and it comes to the point where as well as designers even though sometimes we want to design these beautiful interfaces and beautiful experiences we need to know from a commercial point of view that sometimes even though that is the most delightful thing, we can add more delight somewhere else that will derive some more business outcome at the end of the day. And that's okay, it's, for, it's good for us to pivot and find something new.